Hey everyone, Jen Howe here. I'm going to be showing you how to do the tater topped beef shepherd's pie. Shepherd's pie is actually a family favorite, so I was like, I definitely want to do this because it's something that they're going to eat. Uh, so I was super excited to do it. So you're a part of this group because you're doing uh, our freezing meal workshop with us. And we're making a bunch of different recipes. We're going to show you um, how to make each one of them, but we're going to do um, uh, making it and putting it into the freezer. So one suggestion that I do when I am prepping for, you know, like a week's worth of meals is I do um, all my beef recipes at once. Um, that's personally just what I do. I just find it a lot easier uh, instead of uh, cutting this up to put some aside for a different recipe, I would just cook it all up at once. But for recipe purposes, I'm going to show you how to do it um, exactly uh, as you would do it if you were prepping all of these recipes at once. So again, this is the tater top beef shepherd's pie. And uh, normally I wouldn't really measure my meat, but um, just to keep everything um, uniform, I am going to use my paper chef scale here. I find this uh, super helpful, uh, especially when keeping portion control. Uh, and uh, you can tear it out so it is uh, back at zero. So you need one and a half pounds of your ground beef, okay? And um, one pound is 16 ounces. See, this is where your school math comes into hand. Some of this stuff you have to remember. I'm a little over, but that's okay. So I'm using my 12-inch uh, skillet to cook up my ground beef. Now you do pre-cook the ground beef um, just because it makes it a lot easier when you're actually cooking it um, as your meal for the day. Just makes it a lot easier to have it all pre-cooked, okay? So the 12-inch skillet does have a uh, removable handle. So if I was making this fresh, like if I wasn't gonna do it as a freezer meal, if I was gonna make it fresh for my family, I'd use this pan and I'd take the handle off and I would finish it off in the oven. That's why I love this pan so much. So I am going to use our um, mix and chop to uh, mix up and scramble all of the hamburger. Now we're going to add our onions. So you can use your, our food chopper or you can use our manual food processor. I'm going to use the chopper uh, just because I don't have to cut the um, onion up quite so much. And uh, I'm using also one of our cutting boards here. This is our small, flexible cutting mat. Now you can make them coarsely chopped like that if you want, or you can finely dice them. My family doesn't like onions, so we're going to finely dice them. Chop all of that up. So hopefully they won't notice it's in there. My husband's a stickler for saying, did you put onion and garlic in this? Nope, I didn't. All right. So we're going to add our onion right to the ground beef as it's cooking. And then we're going to add our garlic. So I'm going to use our garlic press. The garlic press, you do not have to peel your garlic. It's super convenient for that. Saves us a step, right? And then I don't even have to touch it. I'm going to use my little tool to scrape it off. Two cloves of garlic, please. And I do recommend using fresh, not the jarred stuff. It doesn't taste the same. It's not as flavorful. It's more expensive. Fresh garlic is actually pretty cheap. I think this says 79 cents for the... Um, a pound or something like that. So it's super inexpensive. All right. So I'm going to uh, get right back to you once the ground beef is cooked for our next step. Hold on. Hey, y'all. We're back here with the tater tot shepherd's pie. So I've got our ground beef. I had to drain it because I used 80%, so it's a little fatty. So I did drain it. Um, again, we do have the onions in here. So now it's time to bag it. So you would want to wait until it's cool, um, but I'm not doing that today. So I do find that folding down the, um, the little lip of the gallon bag is helpful, so I don't get uh, the stuff dripping down the sides. 
You can also put this in a container. If you have like a tall container uh, that you could just stick this right in to kind of hold it, it does, again, make it a lot easier to get the stuff into the bag, okay? So we're going to take the uh, ground beef and we're going to get it into the gallon Ziploc bag. It's not gonna be pretty, so hold on a second. This is where we say we're pampered. We're not perfect, right? All right, so that goes away. So that's where the um, container would have come in handy, holding it, um, it open and everything. And we're just gonna, I just cleaned my counter, so it's totally fine, don't worry about it. Oh, I've got a mess brewing here. All right, so then we need to add the rest of the ingredients. So we've got Hands are greasy. So we've got um, tomato paste, and we're just gonna open and dump everything into the um, the bag. That's what makes these easy and convenient because it's basically you just dump everything in. This is our smooth edge can opener. It's in our cobalt blue, which we cannot get anymore. So don't ask me where you can get it because it was. A seasonal thing and it didn't last too long actually our cobalt blue wine came and went almost as fast as came as fast as it went or went as fast as it came I don't know so we've got our tomato paste and then we're gonna add Hunt's Petite Diced. So I saw there's such a variety of, of uh, diced tomatoes. There was um, fire roasted, there was Italian, and there was some with a little bit of zippiness to it. Don't be afraid to try it. Just give it a go. Just put them in, see what happens. I almost got the Italian, but I'm like, yeah, we're just gonna stick with the exact recipe for today. You don't drain it, just stick the whole thing in there just like that, okay? So then we've got our seasonings, which is bell pepper herb rub and smoky applewood rub, okay? So we're going to do a nice heaping tablespoon of each of those. And uh, bell pepper. Mm, this smells good. All right. So then we've got balsamic vinegar. I'm going to use our measure all cup. I'm just going to put it, it calls for two tablespoons. So I'm just going to put it up to the two. Okay, this is where it gets a little messy too. I couldn't find my little teeny one. And go. All right, we got that. So we've got all of our ingredients. Um, two cups of frozen peas. Um, it does say to add the light in. Okay, okay. So this, uh, sir, the bag is a five servings and they're half a cup each. So I'm going to have like a half a cup extra. I'm just going to dump the whole thing in because who can't use more peas and carrots, right? I'm not even showing you what I'm doing. Sorry, guys. All right, so dump that in. There we go. So now this is the time where you want to try and get um, as much air out of the bag as you can. Okay, we want to make sure that we're not going to get like freezer burnt and stuff. So I just kind of fold it over, just kind of push it. You can get crafty and get a straw out and suck it out, but do your best. It's it's not that difficult. So then I just kind of just kind of mix everything up all together. Do your best. Now the instructions say to take the tater tots and put them into a quart size bag. I'm just gonna put the tater tots with it. So I got my bag of tater tots, it's gonna get stored with it, okay? So now I'm gonna take another um, gallon size bag here. I forgot the name of it. Just gonna put the whole thing in there. And then you're gonna cut your little instructions out here, your whole recipe that you're gonna get. You're just gonna cut that guy right out. There we go. And now we know exactly how to make it when it comes time. There we go, just like that. So we're gonna take this, and we're gonna take this, and we're gonna stack it right in our freezer. 
so when we're ready to have it, we can just take it right up. Now, I would take this out the night before so it's nice and thawed because this, as you can see, it's not super mixed up. So you wanna make sure uh, that you take this out a day before. This is actually our dinner for tonight, so I'm gonna show you quickly how to assemble it when you're ready. So it does say, I put my recipe on here so I can give you the correct instructions. Um, so it's preheat to 425. Okay. And it says to use your Rock Crock Everyday Pan, a medium rectangle baker or a square baker. Don't stress about what pan you have, as long as it's deep enough. Um, I would probably say, you know, three, four inches deep uh, to handle all of this. I wouldn't stress out about it too much. Since my 12 inch skillet is already dirty, that's what I'm gonna use. And it's probably what I would use anyway on cook day, okay? So I'm gonna put this back into the pan that I just took it out of, okay? Where's my scraper? There it is. I'm gonna give it a nice little mixy mix here. And uh, I may have followed the instructions wrong. It may have uh, told me that I should probably layer the frozen vegetables on top of it now that I'm thinking about it, but I'm pretty sure it told me to mix the frozen um, peas and carrots right in with the mixture. So I'm just mixing this up and um, until it's all nice and mixy mixy. There we go. Mostly it's the um, paste and the tomatoes that you want to make sure are um, evenly distributed around, okay? So you just kind of flatten it out a little bit. And then you're going to take your tater tots or your tasty taters from here, Fed. We just rinse them from on top. So instead of potatoes, instead of your um, your uh, mashed potatoes, you've got your tater tots. So this goes in the oven 30 to the 35 minutes, and dinner's ready. So just take that out the night before that you're going to make it leave your tater tots in um, the freezer, but take your actual mixture out the night before so it's thawed, and uh, you're good to go. Enjoy the rest of the freezer meal workshop, guys. Thanks for joining us.